Hello there team. This quick video today is going to show you how to use the PDF viewer primitive within Crimson 3.0 to show a PDF uh, document on a screen of a graphite HMI. And by the PDF uh, viewer primitive I'm talking about, this is going to be found over in the right side of Crimson in the primitives directory. And this is going to be in the system primitives on the right side. And if you take your slider bar and slide all the way down to the bottom, you'll find that you have a PDF viewer that you can drag on your screen here and use it to look at local PDFs that are stored on the SD memory card within your graphite HMI. Now before you can get this thing to actually display your PDF documents, you have to put the PDF document onto the SD memory card on the HMI. The method I like to do this is I like to go over to communications on the left. I'll go ahead and shrink this down so you can see a little more. And the method I like to do is I like to use the FTP server method. And on FTP server, I like to go ahead and enable it here and set up the access for read write so that I can manually move files over to the uh, SD card on the graphite HMI. Now a tool that I use for FTP access is called Core FTP. It's a free software on the web, Core FTP. And if you watch here, I'm going to go ahead and connect to my local HMI, which has locally this IP address right here. I've got checked the anonymous box here to check login anonymously. So let me go ahead and connect to this guy. And this particular side of the screen right here is stuff that's on the local SD card in the Graphite HMI. And this stuff over here is things that show up on my local hard drive here on my PC. In order to use the PDF viewer, you have to create a directory over here. So you right click somewhere and uh, direct your commands and make a directory. And you'll want to call that directory PDF. And then all the documents that you want to look at, you have to put into the PDF directory. So I'll double click on this. And you can see right here, folks, that I've got a series of documents already on here. If this is the first time that you've used Core FTP, it's really easy. You just simply grab your PDF documents from the left side and drag and drop that guy over here. And it will uh, move it over there. And you'll see down here in the header bar that uh, it's a little bigger here that it has moved over the document. Now I have moved over a number of documents just so you can see some difference in uh, some things. One thing I want to point out to you is that is if you're using Crimson 3.0, it uses the 8.3 naming convention. So all of the files have to be eight characters or less in length and file name and no special characters. If you go to Crimson 3.1, with a new hardware you might purchase. Uh, that file name structure uh, becomes much more longer and you can use uh, long file names. But this demo is gonna use the 8.3 naming convention. So that means your file names should not be longer than eight characters long and should not have any strange characters like spaces or underscores. Anyway, if you happen to have a file that you wanna show, the best way to do that team would be to change the name of it here to eight characters or less, then move it over. And then once you do that, then you can use the primitive. So if you look here, I've got a number of documents here. So I'm gonna go back to Crimson 3. I'll go back to display pages on the left. I just drug out the PDF viewer. And let's see that I wanna look at the uh, document uh, uh, WS software. So if I double click on this guy, or right click and go to properties, right here, you have to tell it the name of the PDF document you want to get. So I'm going to type wssoft.pdf, enter, and that's going to load the WSFTP site. So uh, if I go ahead and, uh, not FTP site, but WS software document, not PDF, not PDF, ah, never mind. Anyway, let me try this real quick, team. I'm going to go ahead and download this to my current HMI, and I have already a browser open. So if I go here to remote view, you're going to see that it brings up that particular PDF here. 
and this PDF has a bunch of uh, documents in it. So it's showing it here. Let's say that I want to show another PDF document here. So if I go back to here, I'll add the PDF out here. The other one I want to show this time, let me go here and grab one. I have another one here that has uh, some simple text in it, this uh, lorem one here, L-O-R-E-M. So I'll go over here, double click on this guy and say I want to look at L-O-R-E-M dot PDF. It's just a text box or text file. Go ahead and make this guy a little bigger, maybe we'll make this one a little smaller. Let's go ahead and download this change and see if we can see that particular document on our page. So let's let it load, you know, it's loading the page. And this one is nothing more than just some text box. That's all it is here. You can use the in button here to zoom in to make the font bigger if you want to. And you can also use the out button to zoom out if you want to. Now another PDF document that I have is more of a technical drawing from Turk on a product called FEN20. So let me show you how that will show up. I'm going to use another page to display that one and I'll grab this guy out like this and I'll make it a little bigger this time and I'll double click on it and this one I believe is called uh, well I forgot so hold on let me tell FEN20 PDF so I go here and type FEN20.PDF hit OK I've already pre-set up a button this button here will go to the next page so let's go ahead and download this to it go back to my browser You'll see here that this one loads. If I click this page, it should go to this one. And it should open up the PDF document for the FEN20 station. And as you can see, this is the catalog page for that product. So if I tab in a few clicks here, it should make the font a little bigger to see. There you go. And then if I use the slider bar over here, this little slider bar, click down, it'll go down a page. And if I have multiple pages, um, you can also use this to go through the pages as well. I don't have multiple pages. I just basically have one document here. Let me add one more thing. I want to show you what happens when you, so if I go back to the main page, you'll see it loads. I want to add another page. And on this third page, I want to show the whole complete C3 manual, which is the Crimson 3.0 manual. So this one was called uh, C3 EN for English PDF. So I'll double click here c3en.pdf and the reason I want to show this one to you is because this particular PDF document is a pretty good size 11 megabytes almost 12 megabytes in file size so it's a pretty good size folks I just want to show you what happens when I do this one so let's go ahead and download this to our HMI we'll go back here to our online view and uh, Show us our listing here. If I lose my connection, I'll go back to main here. Oh, it's resetting because that document's pretty big. So hold on a second here. There we go. Go remote view. There's my views there. Hit the FEN20, goes to the next page. You see it's loading this particular thing. No big deal there. But when I go to the C3 manual, now that guy is about 12 megabytes. So let's click the manual and let's take a look and see you know how long it takes. So you see it loaded the first page, but there's 365 pages in this particular manual. So um, you can either hit the down button here to go down a few clicks, or you can grab the slider bar here and slide down or click over here, and then it'll jump to a certain page. Right now it's gonna load page 127. I could obviously use the in button to make the page load bigger so I can maybe read it. Let's see if I get a little bigger here. So that's uh, loading there, and if I hit the home button, I'll go back to the main. So that's just a quick example of how to use the PDF viewer within Crimson 3.0. The key points that you need to remember is that you have to put the PDF document on the SD memory card within the Graphite HMI, and it needs to be in a directory called PDF for it to load, and currently that the file name must be eight characters or less in length and when you refer to it in the Crimson uh, PDF browser, you need to go right here and put in the name there for it to load. So I just thought I'd point that out to you guys. That's just a quick example 
of how you can use the PDF viewer primitive within Crimson 3.0. Hey, thanks a lot, folks. Have yourself a great day.